First off, I want to say rest in peace to Guru from Gangstar. Um, died today, cancer at the age of 43. And to prove that, you know, I'm a big Gangstar fan, I actually cranked the CD out out of my collection. Hard to Earn Gangstar, 1994. One of my favorite albums of all time has one of my favorite rap songs of all time, Mass Appeal, on it. But, um,. I just want to take time out to say recipes to him. You know, CD is actually still in pretty good condition. I do keep my classics in good condition. See, and see the back here, no scratches on it. But anyway, welcome to the distance. I'm here to start my new heavyweight series, History of Heavyweight Boxing, Volume One. I'll be back in a couple days for another one. But you know, anyway, I'm just going to give my opinion on the heavyweight division because there's a lot of mystique and intrigue on the heavyweight division. A lot of people are very interested in that division. And me, I've actually been, on my predictions, I've actually been, I've actually never gotten a heavyweight fight wrong, I don't think. Now that I think about it. I may have been off by, by what I call, like knockout or whatever, but, you know, I've, in the in about five six heavyweight matches that I talked about, I haven't pretty much I haven't gotten the prediction wrong, which is interesting. But anyway, before I talk about the heavyweight division, before I talk about you know what we have now and what led up to now and what led up to the past, you have to talk about the foundation of boxing because the foundation of boxing is what pretty much started the heavyweight division, started every division. Boxing started about. 7,000 years ago in ancient Greece which is thought of by a lot of theologians and historians they believe it started in, it started in ancient Greece and it didn't really become a sport until like 686 BC and that's back when they put the leather straps around their hands around their fist and they would and they would pretty much fight and they would, and either you beat the fire into submission or you beat another fire to death. Really, there there aren't any famous boxers at that time, though there are a few men of myth and legend. And really, boxing what you what you wasn't divided by weight class. You're pretty much it's pretty much you went out there and you fought. It was kind of like it's more like a like a survival of the fittest type thing. The toughest, like a tough man, the toughest man survives. That's really what boxing was at first, and then it di and then it developed years on, and years on it kept developing as time progressed and transcended. And what happened was, with all these fighters, you know, like I said, there wasn't that famous big money making fire back, you know, during the BC period. It just wasn't. There was just men men of myth and legend. That's really all you have. A lot of tales, and. There's another fighter from the ancient Roman times. I can't really remember. I can't remember the guy's name. That's depicted in like a bronze statue, had a cauliflower ear, and it just proved. And, and it's kind of a symbol of how tough boxing was at that time. And the rules were just different. They're nothing like the rules now, of course. You know, like I said, you know, there was no ring. There was no ring involved. There really wasn't a ring until the the London Prize Rules, and when London Prize Rules came along in like 1838, then then really that's when they had they they started to have like a 24 foot ring and stuff like that. But but really leading up to the London Prize Rules, I I believe the biggest fight of the time was probably you know, leading up to that was probably Tom Molyneux versus Tom Cribb. I think that was one of the biggest matchups I could think of after all the research that I've done I can't really think of another big matchup but Molyneux vs Tom Cribb was a was a very historic matchup um, but other than that you know we, we progressed we kept we had the London prize rules bare knuckle and then we had um I'm trying I'm trying to think um of the other name I don't it's um I think Duchess of Queens or something like that Queensberry rules, Marcus of Queensberry rules is what it's called. I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking at something right now. But then you had the Marcus of Queensberry rules, 
which was pretty much with the Marcus of Queensbury, it was kind of a revised version of the London Prize, London Prize rules. And as time went on, and see with the Marcus of Queensbury, he started to divide up the divisions. Because, you know, because at the time, you know, there's not one universal division. Now you have many different, many other different divisions. And later on, as time progressed, all these different divisions had a championship. In history, there are a lot of men who have, who have fought a heavyweight that weren't even, that actually weren't that big. There was, there's documentation of some people being around the light middleweight limit or what we call the light middleweight limit now fighting that they were, they were fighting that heavyweight I believe Sam Langford was one of those fighters but boxing was was necessarily I guess boxing was was necessarily it wasn't necessarily a regional thing it was actually a worldwide it was a worldwide sport a worldwide combat combat sport but people weren't fighting each other. Some there were actually times people were going to other countries to fight. And you know, when Tom Allen was one of those fighters, he actually went to another country to fight. He died in a, another country, I believe. But really, boxing didn't really become. You didn't really have that one mainstream fighter who wasn't a man of legend until you had John L. Sullivan. And I'll get into John L. Sullivan tomorrow. But. You know, really boxing, as I said, boxing started out, you know, as as kind of a survival of the fittest sport. The tougher man survived, and the tougher man won. And either and it was like you either beat him to death or you beat him into submission. And just imagine that. You know, especially now with the different styles of fighting. Say you have a slick fighter who doesn't necessarily have the hand speed. I mean, who has hand speed, but doesn't have that pop in his punches. Just imagine one of those fighters trying to fight to death or fight another guy into submission. And two, there are no gloves. There are no gloves. There was You didn't have a cut man. Other than not having a cut man, you didn't, there weren't any rounds. So just imagine fighters fighting under those conditions. You know, who could survive that? And why in the hell would you get into something like that? Be the question. But to be to be honest, I just think that I just think that cultural I think it's culturally significant that people got into the sport and it's a good thing that people got into the sport because people like myself and other people here on YouTube wouldn't even be on here right now and it and what it did was it kind of raised the platform for other fighters to come along and then when te technology got better people like myself and other and these other channels on YouTube had the platform for us to turn around and talk about boxes and fights such as these and talk about these times in history the beginning of boxing is culture culturally significant and the vast improvements that have been made to boxing with the whether it be rounds whether it be say less rounds because during Jack Johnson's time he was fighting 30 30 rounds 27 rounds wherever whether it be gloves whether it be size of the ring you know, back then fighters didn't have these opportunities that the fighters have now but we needed but at the same time we needed it but anyway, I'll be back, to, not tomorrow, but Thursday, and I'll get into John L. Sullivan, the first universally recognized heavyweight champion, the first and only bare knuckle fighter to become a champion, become a world champion, universally recognized heavyweight champion. But anyway, that was The Distance. Thanks for watching. Peace.